Hello, I'm Dr. Nancy Davidson. I'm the president of the Seattle Cancer Care Alliance, and I'm a leader in the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center. And I'm uh, Dr. David Maloney. I'm the medical director of immunotherapy here at the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Center and the Seattle Cancer Care Alliance, and also uh, work in the field of lymphoma, myeloma, and leukemia. And we're here today to talk about immunotherapy in the field of cancer. We all know that one of the hallmarks of cancer is that something goes awry with the patient's immune system, such that it allows the tumor to start to grow. But thankfully, thanks to advances in basic science discovery and new clinical research, we're now able to understand some of those abnormalities and think about how to use our knowledge about those abnormalities to use the immune system to fight cancer. And with us today is Dr. Maloney, who's an expert in this field. David, very fast moving field. What's the latest in what's going on in immunotherapy and cancer? Well, immunotherapy is basically the ability to use your immune system to, to target cancer. And we've learned that cancers have become very good at evading the immune system. And so, that, so we can manipulate uh, many of those uh, reasons that the immune system fails in the laboratory and, 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 and thus be able to use the immune, immune system to actually target the cancer. And there's several ways. This can include monoclonal antibodies that can attract uh, directly attack the cancer or can it include the cell immune system where we're actually using cells from the patient modifying them in the laboratory and get them to then attack the cancer that's the latest technology called CAR technology or CAR T cells and that's uh, really exciting the field right now. So David let's go back to those antibodies for a minute so there are a lot of them that are available in clinical practice today and then are being tested in clinical trials so these are agents like Herceptin, Rituximab and many others. Is that right? Yeah. So the that the that part of your immune system, the antibody part of your immune system, has proven to be one of the major advances we've made in cancer therapy in the past probably 20 years. Rituximab was first in like 1997, and that targets a, 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 a target that's on lymphomas and some leukemias. And now that's been widespread use widespread use in many of the cancers, including breast cancer. Uh, colon cancer, et cetera. So I think that part of the immune system is well established, it, 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 or the manipulation of that part of the immune system is well established. And, uh, and now we're turning to the cellular part, which is leading all this new excitement. So talk to us about that, about these CAR T cells. So CAR T cells are, are basically where we take your own immune cells from, from a patient and then modify them in the laboratory with a virus. And, and the virus makes a makes the cell then make a receptor that can actually make it bind to the tumor. It's, it's pretty complicated, but we can actually take these cells out of the patient in about two to three weeks, grow them in the laboratory so that they will now attack the cancer. And then we give them back to the patient and those cells are a living therapy. So they actually grow and multiply in the patient and can then hopefully attack the cancer. And we've seen just ex ex tremendously exciting results in several cancers. Which cancers? Well, to, to date, most of the, of the data has been in leukemia and lymphomas, and uh, it's, it's targeting an, anti, an antigen or a target that's on the tumor cell called CD19. And uh, this is what's been all the buzz in the news uh, recently. Uh, we have now published uh, three papers uh, in this field uh, uh, from, from our center uh, looking at leukemia, uh, ALL or acute leukemia, um, lymphoma, and now most recently in chronic lymphocytic leukemia with my colleagues uh, Cam Turtle and Stan Riddell. And uh, we've been able to show uh, just really impressive responses. In, in, the, in leukemia patients, about 90% of patients will have a complete remission in their bone marrow and the blood, and a lesser extent in some of the lymphomas and CLLs, but again, these are just tremendous results in patients who have virtually no options. And so that's what's leading the field, all this excitement in the field. So what, what kind of experience do we have? Is this a kind of therapy that's been given to 10 patients or what's our experience here in Seattle? Well, we're, we're well over 200 patients now as a single institution. I, I believe that's probably the largest experience of anywhere in the world for a single, uh, single center, uh, especially since we're producing all of our own, our own cells uh, here. And we're obviously fortunate to have uh, followed up with that with the Bezos Family Immunotherapy Clinic, which is, I believe, its first of its kind in the world as well, a center that's dedicated to the outpatient delivery of cellular immunotherapy for cancers. And, and so we're, we, we have a lot of experience now um, 
and, and it, it is important to have experience. Uh, there, the, these these uh, uh, treatments are not easy to give. Uh, they, they can have serious uh, side effects, and the experience to recognize those side effects and give the product safely is critically important and will remain so for the field for, I think, years to come. So lots of excitement right now in some of those blood cancers, and I think you've told me that one of the products is actually going forward and being considered by the FDA right now for approval for routine management in the future. What, what's going on in, first, what's the timetable on that? And then second, what's going on in the solid tumor field? You know, for first, the, uh, we're, we're, everyone's very excited that we're anticipating the first FDA approval of, of this uh, process, uh, this CAR technology, with the most, re with, with the most recent uh, Novartis uh, presentation in pediatric and young adult ALL. And I think we'll, we'll have uh, uh, approvals following this year or early next year in, in lymphoma as well. And, and that's where all the excitement is. That's where most of the data is. But obviously everybody wants to extend this to the solid cancers, to the, the cancers that have that are much higher incidence than lymphoma and leukemia. And we have already started clinical trials in lung cancer and breast cancer, and uh, uh, and we're, we're just getting those started in terms of uh, learning about safety and, and learning about efficacy. But obviously if, we, if that would really energize the field further, if, if we can start seeing really dramatic responses. And do you see other opportunities in other kinds of blood cancers beyond the ones that you mentioned, the CLL, the ALL, and the lymphoma? I, I think that uh, the sky's the limit. I mean, uh -huh. literally any cancer uh, that you can identify a target that's, that's uh, associated with the tumor, then we could make a CAR against it or T cell receptor modified cells against it. I think really the sky's the limit. In, the, in addition, as we learn more about the immune system, we, we recognize that there, the combinations will be important. So it's not just going to be CAR T cells. It may be more than one CAR T cell. It may be a CAR T cell plus an antibody, a checkpoint antibody. That, that, that's why there's so much enthusiasm about the field right now. So lots of work going on, all of it right now in the context of clinical trials. Yeah, but that's that's critically important. Right now, uh, the only way to get into these these kinds of uh, get these products is to be on a clinical trial. That will hopefully change, at least in, in, in the field of leukemia uh, later this year. Great. What else do you see on the horizon for immunotherapy? We talked about the antibodies, we talked about the cell-based therapies. If you're blue skying, are there other approaches that are still in the laboratory that you can imagine will be coming forward for clinical testing? Well, people are trying a lot of different things. And, and uh, so for example, there are ways of uh, targets called bites, which we've now seen uh, enter the clinic and get some approvals where you can actually use an antibody to link two cells together. Uh, we can use antibodies to target drugs. We can use antibodies to modify how the immune system interacts with the tumor or, or masquerades, the, uh, the, the, how the, the tumor masquerades itself from the immune system. So all these things are, are very, very exciting. And all as a consequence of really fundamental research which ultimately turns out to have implications yeah, for and that's why we're, that's why we're so excited here. Obviously, we have the Fred Hutch behind us, which is the, where all the science is, and then we have a fabulous clinic to be able to deliver state-of-the-art immunotherapy and take uh, processes from the, from the lab to the clinic, back to the lab, and then back to the clinic. So very translational research. Extraordinarily important when we think about trying to change human health. Very yeah. exciting time. For you and me who've been in oncology for a long time, and immunotherapy has been discussion for such a long time. It's now gone from hypothetical to reality. Yeah, and that's it's, very exciting. It's very exciting to see it happen. Yeah. Well, thanks so much. I had a chance to talk with Dr. David Maloney, who's the head of the Bezos Family Immunotherapy Clinic here at the Seattle Cancer Care Alliance and the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center. Thanks very much.